Now profile and dependencies review. Okay. What does this have? Okay. Now let's talk about what is profile. Right? So, yeah. see, suppose you have, uh, you know, you, uh, there are lots of servers in your data center that will be listening to the HTTP, right? Mm -hmm. There may be lots of servers that, you know, different, different applications are hosted on those servers which are working on HTTP or HTTPS, right? So, what we do, we create a profile, uh, right? And that profile, we put it on the virtual server, mm -hmm. right? So, what does this profile means? Profile defines the traffic policies, right? Profile yeah. is a easy way to define a traffic policies. Otherwise, you have to configure each virtual server and then you have to define each and everything, doing lots of things. And if, if, if suppose you want to create a, a HTTP, uh, you know, virtual server for four or five HTTP virtual server with a different, 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 different. And again, you, you want to create another virtual server of HTTP, then again, you have to create the same thing, right? But if you create a profile, right, the same profile you can apply to the different, different virtual server, which are listening to the HTTP request, right? Right, right. So it's just like if, it, if, I talk about, uh, if I talk about in a software programming, it's just a function. You created a function and you applied that function to the different, different class. Correct. So yeah. the profile is an easy way to define our traffic policies and these profiles are then later applied to the many virtual servers based on the requirements. So what you're saying is, look, a single policy can exist on a multiple virtual yes. servers on the same yes. box. Yeah, same okay. box. Okay. Right. Suppose you have a virtual server of a yahoo.com right you have a virtual server of a google.com and all they both listens to the http right so why why you will create a you know four uh, you know uh, two different uh, you know uh, policy you create a profile that if a traffic receives from any of the ip address and if it's http then go to this uh, virtual server and apply to these both Yes. Then you know you don't need to connect. You know, configure the ins uh, the uh, configuration on the virtual servers, on each virtual got it, server. Got it. You have the profile got already. It. You have you have to apply it. Got it. Now my next question is: Hello, can single policy? Right. Yes. So it's always better, and and for the management also, right? It it will be easy. Suppose you are facing any challenge or any issue in the in the HTTP, then only you have to troubleshoot for the HTTP, not for all. Otherwise, what you will do, you will be get puzzled. Oh, boss, what is going on? I have applied exactly. everyone. I have, right. So, the, for the management point of view and troubleshooting point of view, it's always you know to have a dedicated service, pro, uh, you know, profiles, and then apply it to the virtual server. So, the management and administrative is all you know should be easy, and and also it's for the security, uh, you know, point of view, it's also you know it's easier. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense, man. Yep. Yeah. Now, what is the, what is the dependency in the profile, right? So, you are aware what is the profile. I'm, you know, I'm just giving the overview because in the second chapter, it's overview of the all of the some of the concepts, right? So we will discuss these all in the detail. So, so what is the profile dependency? If I talk about, so we know what is the profile. What is the profile dependency? Right right so yes. some profile are dependent on other and some combination of profile are not allowed first thing so suppose if i talk about osi model what happens your upper layer traffic you know goes to application layer goes to packet goes to presentation layer then session layer then transport layer network layer data link layer and then physical layer right so yes. 
your 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 packet is dependent on upper layer and then downwards right and then it goes to down and then it goes to physical layer and then it goes to the cable from the cable it goes to the second device from the second device your binary bit 0 1 is uh, you know combined it, it it creates a packet frame it goes to the data link layer then network layer then tcp layer and then finally the application layer then you will open a mail and then you will see that okay somebody has mailed me right it, it is just like that Exactly. So here, yeah. so, he, so here also, your profile are dependent on each, uh, you know, each other. Some of the profile are dependent on some of the other profile, and some of the combination of profile are not allowed. Also, mm -hmm. right? For example, mm -hmm. if I talk about, so your big IP system profile cannot use HTTP profile to process data unless a TCP profile is not present. Right, your HTTP profile will only work when your HTT TCP profile is there. Why? Because to send the HTTP, uh, you know, packet, your TCP connection has to be established. Right. So your TCP profile should be there, and then your HTTP profile will work. So your HTTP profile we is dependent on your TCP profile. Right. Right. Correct. Yeah. So here, suppose think think of the OSI model. So all were for all virtual server have a four uh, layer four profile like TCP. Some profile are dependent on each other. So your HTTP will be always you know uh, your HTTP will always be you know dependent on the TCP. Yeah. And some of the profile cannot be combined. Right, TCP and UDP, UDP cannot be combined. Why? Because TCP is a connection-oriented protocol. It needs the acknowledgement, and then it sends the traffic. But UDP is not. Right? UDP. What UDP does when a packet is UDP packet is sent, whether the client receives it or not, it doesn't bother. It sends the packet. But the TCP, it receives the acknowledgement, then only it will send the packet. Next packet. Right? Based on the windowing size, if we talk about. Right, right, right. Correct. Right, right. So some of the some of the profiles combination are not allowed, like TCP and UDP. Right, right, got it. Right. And also, we'll yeah, we'll talk some you know later on as well. I want to know what is the cookie persistence. Yeah, the persistence we have the another topic in the you know fourth sure. or fifth chapter we have in detail. So I will let you know. Sure. Right. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Let's talk about the SSL review. How does the you know certificates and these are the installed, yeah. right? Yes, please. So, so, topic. Yeah. yeah. So I think this one will be interesting for you. <laughs> exactly, because you know I'm a bit weak on the certificate side. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, yeah. Look, that's why you know I really want to be uh, be be proficient and comfortable in the search. You know. Yeah. So yeah. please go on. Yeah. Now, so suppose, you know, client SSL review means uh, what happens, you know, uh, think of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, scenario whether your client sends a encrypted packet, right? And F5 receives it and F5 sends encrypted packet to the client, your servers. Then the server will spend a lot of time to decrypt it, process it, Again, encrypt it, send it to F5, and the finally the packet goes to the client. That means your response time of any of the application will be very, very slow. Right? If all these works to be done by the server, not F5. Right? So here the SSL offloading, you know, the F5 is done. The SSL offloading technique, the F5 involves. Right? What it does when it sends when a client sends the you know encrypted tra traffic the what f5 does f5 decrypts it and then send it to the server server as soon as the server gets its process and it sends back to the f5 f5 encrypt it and again send it to back so <coughs> the response time is much faster in this process that otherwise what would happen you will have op you would have opened the https request and you are waiting for some certain point of time then your application start loading Right. So the SSL offloading is also done in the uh, F5. Now, if I talk about the client SSL review, 
the client sends the encrypted packet first second big ip receives the encrypted packet decrypts it and process it right third now when the big ip decrypts the packet sends it to the pool member the pool member process the unencrypted request and sends the unencrypted response to the f5 so this is here ssl offloading is done yeah fourth big ip response encrypts the response and send it to the client so this is how the ssl you know offloading is done into the into the uh, you know f5 right one question um, real quick is alok when the traffic is coming in uh, if i can just process what you just said the client will send and give the traffic to the f5 if if f5 do not do uh, ssl load balancing then what happens SSL, no, is it's not off, oh, sorry it's not ssl load balancing it's ssl offloading it's so removing sorry, yes, the yes. SSL, you know, exactly. packet header. In, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So SSL offloading, not load balancing. So what he's saying is, though, see, so whenever someone says, is, is your F5 on its scaler doing SSL load balancing? Essentially, what the meaning is, so uh, are they taking responsibility of decrypting from the and server? Encrypting. And uh, and encrypting, decrypting, encrypting. You're right. Because if F5 did not do that, as you said then the complete load will come on to the server, which is a pool members, to yeah. be able to decrypt, process it, and then encrypt, and then send it back to the uh, client, uh, you know, transparently to the F5. So that means yeah. latency will come in, lot of load on the servers, et cetera, et cetera. So therefore, Correct. to reduce the latency, to reduce the uh, CPU memory and disk load on the servers. And, 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 and so what you're doing is you're making F5 to take the responsibility of the server to some extent. That means to yes. take up the traffic while coming in and then send the clean test, uh, clear, test uh, clear data, uncrypted data to the server. Server do the magic, she do the processing, send the traffic back to the F5, and then F5 encrypt the traffic and send it back to the client. Correct, hundred percent correct. Okay, got it, man. Thank you. Right. So there are, you know, here we understand the client SSL review. So this is called as a client side SSL traffic flow. Yeah. So this this, this method is called as a client, oh, client side. This method is called client uh, SSL review. Got it. Yeah. Right. This right, is this right. is this is called as a client side SSL traffic. Right. There is also a server side SSL, you know, traffic. Right. So, but uh, you know, obviously, the in in the in the servers, you know, uh, I just forgot what this server side SSL initiation happens. Yeah. So you know. In the server side SSL, let me you know, uh, uh, go through it because so in this what, what does uh, you know in the uh, server side SSL in the server side SSL once the traffic receives from you know uh, client to the F5 right the F5 decrypt it right yeah. and then there is a server side SSL profile is also also there. If you, if you, if you, if you created the server side SSL, then that means you have to create a server side SSL profile, right? Then this profile will be used by the F5 to encrypt, re-encrypt the traffic and send it to the pool member. That means your traffic from client to the big IP is coming encrypted. Big IP is decrypting it and then Big IP is using the S client server side SSL profile to re-encrypt it and the re-encrypted packet is again sent to your pool members. Right? right. And the pool member receives the encrypted tra traffic, decrypt it, process it and again encrypt it and it sends to the back to the F5. Right? And then Big, big IP F5 decrypts it again, uses the client side SSL profile to re-encrypt it and then it sends to the client. 
so generally if you if you use both client side uh, you know ssl initiation and a server side ssl initiation there will be a lot of you know uh, uh, you know uh, delay or latency will be done and your application will be pretty very very slow so in a general tendency we only use the client side ssl why because f5 exactly. is by so because the f5 you know by default is a by default deny everything is by default denied till the time you are allowing allowing the specific ports specific pool members specific source ip right so it's just acting as a firewall also so there is and obviously you are not exposing your f5 to your plain internet obviously there will be a firewall in you know if if the if the if you are if if the uh, you know, no request is coming from the internet or a intranet obviously it will be placed some in uh, fi will be placed in the server zone and the server zone obviously have a firewall so there will be two layer two tier security is already there right you have already maintained in the data center right so there is no need of you know use the server side ssl exactly exactly because the internet trusted zone anyway right yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. most of the servers are sitting in the you know uh, it, it's a trusted zone it's not even semi trust if it is semi trust DMZ, I can understand, but you're right. But uh, you know, it, it's a, but it's the same. Like you know, uh, that's what confuses me is uh, look uh, with the server side. This is a client side, no issues. I got it. Uh, that's basically uh, to do the offloading, reduce the uh, you know, improve the latency, improve the performance, reduce the load on the server. But when you're doing the server side, uh, you know, server side SSL review. Uh, you know, we're not getting any benefit. You know, we, you know, servers will be working hard because that guy need to uh, decrypt again, process it again, re-encrypt, send it. So therefore, your application performance will be suffering, right? Correct. Correct. Right. Right. So basically, we don't do. But you know, if if there is a client, uh, suppose there is a if if we talk about in US, the US defense is much more you know secure reason. So anyway, if the US government, uh, if the defense, their defense system wants that, no, my from my uh, F5 to the server also, my traffic should be encrypted so that no one can go in between uh, my F5 and uh, your server, your server, because obviously they are not directly connected. They will be connected via some switch. So if if anyone you know inside that office uh, try to hack something or take something, that also they will not be able to do. So oh, so to right. make a so to make additional security where the 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 security is the highest priority, then we do it. Else, if the security is not much priority, only you want to protect your incoming traffic from the client to the f5 then only the client you know uh, and 90 95% you know data center or uh, you know customers only use the client ssl side only because if you use the both or if you use the uh, then obviously your application will be too slow and there will be thousands of users will be accessing the same you know ser service and and obviously they will not be able to work yeah man exactly one taken right now yeah now let's talk about the yeah so pers what does this persistence means persistence means based on a client source ip address what what does this mean mm -hmm.